continuing on with um, using Revit to, to build spatial planning and some spatial planning diagrams, let's look at turning this really, really rough plan into something that's a little bit more presentable. So I'm going to slide that elevation tag a little bit out of the way, and I'm going to go to my Annotate tab, and I'm going to select Color Fill Legend. And I'm going to left click to place that right beside. So this is going to fill, this is going to create uh, an infill pattern of different colors for my different spaces. And again, this is something that can go terribly wrong. I would suggest that you learn to keep the color palette muted and keep things simple and keep things schematic. So the same type of spaces get the same type of color. So the way that I want to set up my room schedule or my room colors is I'm going to use rooms. So this is going to base color off of room names and this color scheme is going to be based off of names. I want to double check that one more time. Space type rooms, right, and color scheme, name. So this is basically going to assign colors per name on the room. And immediately I get something that has a little bit of a pop to it. It might not be exactly the color scheme that I want. Um, this is actually not too bad. But let's look at editing if I wanted to. Over here on my properties, again with nothing selected, coming to my color scheme properties, I can click name, and you can see the color setups that I have right here. So any adjustments that I might make, like if I wanted space two and lobby to be slightly very, slightly different variations of this blue color, I might want to come in and say, okay, let's take this color right here, and let's get that a little bit more in line with that sort of blue family. so that those kind of relate a little bit more together in terms of a color palette. Now, as I come through, anything that I might add in, like a door, is not going to have any impact on the color scheme. Uh, it still understands, Revit is still going to understand that there are separations through here. Um, so any opening will still maintain the spatial separations. With the color schemes, as I begin to add in components over the top, like if I were to come in and add a desk in, you'll actually see those as items floating over the top of the color, which is kind of nice. Next thing, let's look at uh, pushing forward a little bit with this as a presentation plan. There's a few more things that I might like to do, like let's add in some dimensions. So I'm going to go to Annotate, Align Dimensions. And again, I'm not going to use the center line of the wall. I'm going to use Wall Faces and go outside edge to edge of wall, edge of wall, and outside edge. And then I can place where I'd like that dimension line to be. Same thing here, outside edge to outside edge, and then I want to place that above. Try, always try to avoid getting your dimensions running to the center of a plan. It just really muddles things up. It's an extra line to look at. Those things should always be stacked to the outside unless we're getting really in close to some specific details on your plan drawing. So the next thing let's look at is going to be um, setting up a little bit of depth in the plan. And I can do that coming to um, Shade and Shadows. So by turning on Shadows, I actually get this little bit of depth um, that's created by the fact that this is actually 3D geometry. So I might want to come in and look at my graphic display options. And I know that given this site, um, I would like the lighting to be coming from a slightly different direction or the sunlight from a slightly different direction. So I actually might look at changing that um, by going to the sun settings. And let's go to um, still. And let's establish our location. Run the city list. We'll scroll down to Kansas City. At 11 a.m. And we should see the shadows update. Looks a lot better now. The next thing is those shadows are really dark. Um, so I really need to turn those down significantly. 
um, from 50 down to, I usually use a number closer to about 15. So I still get the effect of the shadow without that much intensity. Much, much better. Next, let's get these lines uh, for the walls looking a little bit thicker. Um, uh, not actually the thickness of the walls, but I want them to kind of punch visually uh, on the floor plan. So by selecting one of the walls, I can come to Edit Type. And then I can establish a fill pattern for the wall. So I'm doing that by coming right down to Graphics, Course Fill Pattern. Click on the three dots, and I'm going to select Solid and OK. And rather than going with black, again, I want to use a dark gray, because I'd like to be able to see the outside edge of the line, but then have this nice gray sort of poche or hatch within the wall. A few additional things that I can begin to do with this as a graphic as well. Um, and it just depends on how you want to present and what you're looking for, where the project is at. Uh, a lot of times if, if it's a professional project and you want things to, to appear more schematic, I can also come in and add sketchy lines as well. So coming in and enabling sketchy lines is something we can do on a floor plan and give this a little bit more of a hand-drawn look. Um, you know, I get these sort of nicer little edges. Things appear a little bit softer in terms of the layout and how it works. Um, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword um, because you can see there's a few things that show up here and there that I might not want to, but for the most part, this can be sort of a nice way to sort of soften up what might look like a very rigid-looking floor plan into something that appears a little bit more schematic. So those are the basics in terms of setting up Revit, beginning to use it for uh, schematic design, spatial planning, and a little bit of detail in terms of working a plan into a presentation drawing.